Heading into the end of has -Been Hotel's first season, everyone was expecting a major character to bite the dust. And while that was technically true, as Sir Pench has unlocked Angel status after a selfless act, the only character who seems to be gone for good is everyone's favorite dirtbag, Adam, who suffered a quick but very painful death at the hands of Nifty. But here's the thing. Is Adam really gone? Like, yeah, we watched him die as an angel, but who's to say he won't make a comeback as a demon? I mean, if Pentius ended up in heaven through unconventional means, skipping the line outside the pearly gates, who's to say Adam won't respawn in hell? Come on, I've thought it, you've thought it, we've all thought it. And quite frankly, Adam coming back as a demon has way more narrative potential than this being the end for him. I mean, just think about all the possibilities. Would Adam check into the Hasbin Hotel? Would Loot look down on him for becoming a demon? And would this reinstate his deal with Lilith? Hope you're hungry for some theories, because it's time for me to cook. Also, if you'd have enjoyed this theory and want to get the lowdown on more adult animated series, please throw this video a like and subscribe to the roundtable with notifications on so you never miss an upload. With that said, let's get to work. First things first, I think there's a bit of a misunderstanding of how death works in the Helliverse. Angelic weapons are the only way to kill a demon, or evidently an angel. Got it. But for some reason, people have made the assumption that this means that they can't reincarnate, as if their soul is just obliterated the moment their body makes contact with an angelic weapon. And I don't think that's the case. From my understanding, demons would heal from any other attack. The weapons permanently kill them in the sense that they can't regenerate, not that they prevent reincarnation something that requires death in the first place. If they were able to block this, Pentius wouldn't have been sent to heaven. Sure, he was blasted to bits by Adam instead of being pierced by a blade or something, but Adam is a very powerful angel. I'm confident a direct hit from him is just as effective as an angelic weapon, if not more, given that he was the head honcho. A similar energy-based attack from his guitar almost put Alistair in a body bag, and I'm sure he used this move in other exterminations. There's also arguments like, oh, but the exorcist who got killed didn't end up in hell. But not only do I think Adam, an archangel dying is going to hold more weight than a regular exorcist, but why would they spoil that twist so soon? On a random no-name henchman and not a huge overarching antagonist. Why would that exorcist even wander to the hotel? They weren't killed by anybody from the hotel, and it wasn't proven viable yet. It just doesn't track. No matter if Pentius was zapped or slain with a weapon, he would have been the first sinner to be reborn in heaven after dying a second death. And I think it's only natural to juxtapose this with Adam being the first angel to die once again, only to be reborn in hell. Pentius went out in a blaze of glory, sacrificing himself in an attempt to save his friends. A truly selfless act. Inversely, Adam had a very pitiful Death. Looking out for no one but himself, he let the ego get the best of him as he boasted about how he was hot shit. He had a god complex that was undermined by him being taken out by Nifty, someone who we absolutely would have perceived as the weakest link. There was a reason he didn't even notice her sneaking up on him. He died as a self-absorbed asshat. He died committing sin. At least the other exorcists can hide behind indoctrination and the fact that they were just doing their jobs. Adam was the one actually pulling the strings and pushing the limits of what he could get away with, moving up the extermination for no other reason than he wanted to. Whatever mysterious force took mercy upon Pentius saw his progress, saw his sacrifice, and decided he deserved another chance, will want to judge Adam, but won't show him the same kindness. It's time for him to reap what he sows. So Adam comes back as a demon, trapped in the place he hates the most. What then? Well, then the show really begins. It's only a matter of time before all of hell knows that the hotel works. Sinners rejoice! There's a way out of this shithole! Once the word travels to a reborn Adam, he'll get into some shenanigans and show up at Charlie's doorstep, demanding to check in as their newest guest, solely because he sees it as his ticket back into heaven. From his perspective, it's as simple as checking in, doing some yoga or whatever, dying again, and then he's back at the top, commanding his army and all. But this request would put Charlie's goodwill to the test, as although the hotel exists to help people, Adam is... well... Adam. The original dick. The leader of the exorcist. The brains behind the extermination, probably. His genocidal bloodlust is the reason why Charlie came up with the hotel in the first place. 
He's the opposite of everything Charlie stands for. Why should he be admitted to the hotel? Well, because he's the perfect candidate for the hotel, which Charlie will be forced to recognize. Adam's a misogynistic psychomaniac. If they can get him back into heaven, then it's proved the hotel really does work. And Pentius wasn't just a one-time fluke. And I love to see Charlie's growth as a leader as she does something really, really hard for herself by putting personal vendetta aside to help someone even if they don't exactly deserve it. However, I could see Alistair or Baggy convincing Charlie to put up with Adam as his stay in the hotel could lead them to learning more about the exorcist and any weakness that can be exploited. Though he could easily bullshit them with misinformation. Of course, if Adam truly wants to get back into heaven, then he'll have to relinquish his selfish desires and not half-ass his efforts of self-improvement. Something that'll be an uphill battle, as it seems like Adam was never one to reflect on his life choices, and I think it'll be hard for him to open up when he's surrounded by the people he despises most. Speaking of which, a part of the reason I'm itching to see this theory come true is the character interactions that it'd provide. Imagine Adam beefing with Alistair or Lucifer. Alistair and Adam constantly trying to one-up each other, Adam holding his victory against Alistair over his head, while Alistair rubs in the fact that in Hell, he holds way more authority than Adam. And since Adam would no longer be an angel, Alistair may be more powerful than him. I don't think his powers will translate to hell one-to-one. -one. Not to mention Adam's presence may shed some light on Alistair's deal, assuming that deal was made with Lilith or Eve. Same thing with Lucifer. Adam would definitely hold a grudge towards the King of Hell, which could lead to more information on Adam's two wives trickling out to the audience. And it's not just the has-been squad that Adam would be hanging around, as I can see the troublemaker conspiring with the Vs in no time. Tempted to stay in Hell and become an overlord, as he helps Vox and Valentino destroy the hotel from the inside. But by far, the greatest potential this twist would provide is the tension that it would bring between Adam and Luke. Based on everything we know about Luke from Season 1, this would put her in quite the predicament. She already looks down upon demon kind, regarding them as an abomination. So how will she react to Adam switching teams? She's shown to really care for Adam, breaking down at the sight of his dying body. People have already started shipping the two, fans and crew alike, and while I'm not sure how to unpack this relationship from a romantic standpoint, as it's implied Adam created the exorcist, but you know, I guess the best match for a narcissist would be an extension of himself. And the Helliverse loves its pairings, so I can't say I'd be all too surprised. So if they do go in a direction where, yes, these two are romantically inclined, Loot would have to reassess her own moral code. A big reason why she hates Vaggy is her relationship with Charlie, viewing an angel loving a demon as vile. But what happens if she's placed in that exact same situation? Will she ultimately change her ways and resign from her position as the new leader of the Exorcist? Or will she double down and do a 180 on Adam, regarding him as someone who was once a mighty warrior of heaven, but is now as filthy and deserving of death as the rest of hell? Lou has honestly become one of the most interesting characters in the series for me, especially after the season finale elevated her role in the story. And if you're interested in a video all about Lou and what I think is in store for her arc, make sure you subscribe to the channel and keep an eye out. Last but not least, we have Lilith, someone who's not only set up to play a larger part in season two, but was revealed to have made a deal with Adam in the final scene of season one. Adam's return may allow us to learn more about the circumstances around this deal, since it's unlikely Lilith will be fully honest. Would Adam reincarnate mean that their deal is reinstated? How would that all work? I think it'd be pretty interesting to see them flip the script and have Adam make a deal with Lilith for whatever reason, since she's now the one with all the power. Adam getting humbled as he has to answer to a woman for the first time in his life. I don't know, this all sounds pretty peak. But as always, these are just my thoughts and I would love to hear yours. Do you want to see Adam make a comeback? And if so, how do you think it would impact the story? Let us know in the comments down below and give me a follow on Twitter and Insta at OffrickVox. Shout out to my boy Hats Off Media for bringing Demon Adam to life. Subscribe to his channel and watch some of his videos so he can fund his own cartoon, Screen Time. And check out Toon Drip for some dope cartoon merch. Links in the description. Thank you for watching and I hope you all have a great day. See ya!